know, what ended up happening with your relationship with Prince? I know that you guys, you stepped away in 95. You had mentioned, uh, or you are, you, I think your recollection was 94. Um, but you had mentioned that Maite was, was kind of part of that decision, but, um, I, was there anything else that kind of, you know, came, came into play as far as your decision to kind of walk away? I mean, I mean, well, was there, yeah, good spot? I would say that, you know, like I said, the, the, as far as the relationship, um, you know, it, it definitely had changed, particularly in that last year. Um, this, cause there was just more no's, you know, he was unhappy with the, the record deal. Um, yeah. I really wouldn't say he was unhappy with the record deal. He was unhappy with the business model of record companies. Yeah. And now I had become a part of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and it was because I'm trying now I'm explaining to him, no, this is why this has to work this way. And it's like, he just didn't want it to work that way. Um, I didn't want to be. I couldn't say yes, if I didn't mean it. You know, right. so mm -hmm. when the whole slave right. issue and whatnot came up, I didn't agree with it at, at all. Um, I, I was very much against it. I knew what he was trying to convey, but um, in some ways I found it offensive. You know, it's like Prince, slaves didn't get paid. You know, they suffered. And that's not really where you're at. I understand your frustration, but that's just not what this is. Being happy, but I just didn't feel comfortable with that message being out there. Um, and, you know, as he wanted to go in, in different directions, they weren't the directions I wanted to go. And I didn't want to be complicit. I didn't want to, you know, say, well, he made me do it. I didn't, I didn't want to be that guy that said he made me do it and then come in with the bill. Right. You know, I, I just, I couldn't do it. I had a responsibility to the, to the staff. We had a wonderful staff at Paisley. You know, there was a lot of sacrifice for everyone that, that worked in that environment. And I also felt he needed to understand that, again, Paisley was its own, its own entity, and he had a responsibility to that. Yeah. Well, that's what so, he wanted it anyways. Because well, right. yeah, but you have to. You created it. Like I said, if you create that business, you have to be there. And he was right. there, and I was fine with taking the responsibility of running it. But you couldn't just do whatever you wanted to do out of it. You couldn't abuse it. You yeah. know, you couldn't shut down studios because you just don't want anyone in the studios when you need a business as part of the business model. You can't shut down the sound stage, you know, because you just don't want anyone else to use the sound stage. You can't not go on tour when touring was part of the business model that we needed to run. You know, you, you just, these are things that we had put in place a pretty good foundation for him to continue to build what he wanted to build that hundred million dollar deal was worth more than a hundred million. I, I know there's people out there who oh, never really was. No, it was. And mm -hmm. he had the support of Warners. Warners was trying to give him those things that he needed. You know, part of that deal was $30 million of funding for Paisley Park Records. And it it was going to allow wow. him to, yeah. So it, it, the, the, that 30 million was going to allow us to actually hire a staff of, you know, record people that were totally somewhat independent of, of Paisley, but they were still answering to, to me and to, to Paisley. They were part of the Paisley group, but they were going to work hand in hand with Warners to produce artists. We signed George Clinton. We had Mavis Staples, you know, TC Ellis, um, uh, Tevin Campbell. All that was through that deal. And it was being funded by Warners through the, the record deal that we put together. Um, but, you know, he wasn't happy with that. And it, and it was kind of like, I, I didn't want, I just, if I cared for him in the way that I felt personally, then I wasn't going to become a yes man. And if That's... there's one thing about my position with him, I never was that person. I wasn't going to become that person. And, um, you know, it was just time. It was time for me to leave. He wasn't happy about the fact that I left, but we lived right down the road from each other. And it's like, you know, if you ever need me, just call me. I'll, I'll be there. Right. And like you said, I... you left him in good hands. You're right. I thought he was in good hands. I, I thought exactly. from a personal standpoint, she was definitely something that was going to help him to become the right. man he needed to be. I think well, one of the hardest things is for an artist to separate 
um, that creative side and that and the business side. And yeah. so when you're that when you're that person and you're you're going to have that battle. So it's it's an amazing thing to have had you for all that time to save him from himself is really the only <laughs> way you. we could put it. So Thank, yeah. I appreciate that. And yeah, and, and you know, there's a certain marriage that has to take place uh, with with creatives in in business right. one does not work without the other you know exactly. it's a symbiotic relationship there's got to be the balance in that to make it work and that's when it works um and you know in a lot of ways on the business side he just at the time he just didn't he wasn't really attuned to that that's what was in his way and you know when was the last time that you spoke with prince and and what did you guys talk about so after i left um you know we had deep conversations about the fact that I was going to leave. I was trying to actually, when I had announced my resignation, I was going to leave at the end of the year. Um, so I was trying to find my replacement. Um, I don't think any of that he was really comfortable with or reacted to very well. And then some of the things he started doing were actually against what I was trying to do for him. Um, so I moved that date up and uh, left earlier and then left earlier than that early was going to be. And so with that said, we never had, you know, uh, a blowout, drag out argument fight. You know, I, I never wanted to feel disrespected by him and I would never disrespect him. It was Prince's show. And at the end of the day, he could do, you know, whatever he wanted with it. Um, I loved him, you know, and by me leaving in the way that I did, I felt it was the, you know, I wished him the best, like, you know, going forward, I felt he was going to be fine. And, you know, he would continue to do prints. Um, he did call a few times after I left. I, I just wasn't in the headspace of wanting to take the call at the time. And, uh, and so our last conversation was that summer that, that I, I left at the same time, you know, um, with my relationship with Sheila or anything like that, uh, if there was a, a need or something like that, he could have easily reached out to her. But he went on and he continued to do what he did and, you know, Super Bowl and releasing these records and whatnot. And you found that where he was a lot of times, it was the music. I mean, everything was kind of focused on what that next project was and what the music was. And if you didn't have a role in that, then what role did you have? And so I think with a lot of the relationships that Prince has or had, um, it wasn't about whether he liked a person or didn't like a person or had a fight with this person or some, it was just, you didn't have a role to play in that next thing that he was doing. And he was, that's where his focus was on. So um, we didn't have any crosswords upon me leaving. Um, I was a fan when I left. I was a fan when he passed away. I was terribly distraught, like we all were, when he passed. Um, and where I wish were, things would have turned out different. Where were you when you heard? I was in Los Angeles. And uh, so I got the call from, from Sheila um, that that he had passed. And well, actually, the call was somebody was found in Paisley. You know, immediately you hope that it wasn't him immediately you hope that it wasn't something that he was associated with if it wasn't him and then she called and she said it was him and uh so we offered to come um to paisley which was accepted and so her and i flew in from los angeles and so i was there that evening and found him that morning and i got there that evening um, which was surreal. I mean, I hadn't stepped into the building since 94, 95. And now here I am, you know, back there. And uh, it was, it stuff. was, it was difficult, but, um, you know, the tragedy happened in the way that it happened. And there wasn't the structure necessary to navigate what happened and um in some ways i found myself back in that position of helping or 
being responsible for how this was going to be handled. And so I handled it, you know, for my friend as best as I could or as, as the opportunity um, presented itself. And I did it for no more reason than uh, out of respect for what he deserved. And, and I felt at the end of the day, the world lit up purple. Thank <laughs> you.